What's up everybody, my name is Braskus, and welcome back to Pathologic Classic HD. First thing on the list here is the letters that we got right at the end that I didn't realize I'd gotten until some of you lovely people commented to let me know that I had received letters. Which was great, I probably would have found them anyway, but uh, I was really concerned that I had gotten them like two-thirds of the, or one-third of the way into the last episode and I just ignored them for the whole time. Okay, so confidential notation written on your recommendation sent for approval. This is all great, great information. Annotations for patrolmen, couriers, executors, and sanitary personnel, or executors. In order to prevent panic, this annotation is classified and its contents should be under no circumstances disclosed to the civilian population. The disease is incurable. There is no vaccine, neither here nor in the capital. However, there are a few positive facts. Number one, that's false. We know you can be cured, or at least Maybe you can be cured before you get hit with a full-blown disease? I don't know. The schmouters seem to work for me. The probability of contracting the disease is significantly lower for someone who has taken immune system stimulants. As of now, we believe that A pills and B pills, yellow-colored and blue-colored pills, respectively, provide the best protective effort. Effect. Excessive doses of these medicants may be detrimental to one's health. Additional protection is afforded by synthetic clothing. Woolen garments are strictly off-limits, parasites. The clothing should be changed as often as possible. So I guess we have reason to go find and buy new clothes. Although every tailor I've found doesn't seem to have clothes. Maybe they will now that this is out. Number three, important. The disease develops sporadically. At its initial stage, it does not progress in any significant way, especially if antibiotics are taken. However, if contact with the infection reoccurs, the development of the disease becomes extremely rapid. So if you get infected and then you get hit with it again, you're in a lot of trouble. The disease is not transmitted by means of droplet infection. As of now, we've yet to find out how it's contracted. Preliminary tests suggest that the disease is not contagious at early stages. Therefore, there is no need to isolate the sick person immediately after the appearance of the symptoms. Uh, for the executors, in consideration of your particular line of work, we believe that you will not be able to avoid infection. If you've contracted the disease, do not give in to despair. It would have happened sooner or later anyway. Try your best to conserve the infection at its initial stage. Take antibiotic medicine. Consider using the schmouters. They are extremely dangerous, but they help curb the infection. Epidemic written on your recommendation sent for approval. Ruben's letter. Okay, so we've got the epidemic. Um, which is what we just read, I guess. Ruben's letter. Wait a minute. Uh, no, I'm sorry. So the, to address the townspeople, attention all citizens. Following the outbreak of a lethal disease known as sand plague, sand pest, and sand dirt, the town authorities hereby declare a state of emergency. The disease is extremely contagious. There is still ongoing research as to how the disease is transmitted, but cases of contact and droplet infection have been confirmed. There are currently no vaccine solutions in the town, and none are to be expected before the regular train arrives. Please be extra careful. The townspeople are forbidden to leave their homes unless under special instructions. Remember, the possibility of infection is much lower for those who stay indoors. The citizens are advised to sterilize their household wares, boil their clothing, and exterminate as many vermin as possible. Do not panic. Medics, couriers, and executors will take care of mail delivery, as well as the distribution of drinking water, provisions, and medicine. Requests, requests should be written down and slid under the door for couriers to collect. The address was composed on the instructions of Bachelor Dankovsky and ratified by the State of Emergency Town Governor Alexander Sabarov. It is compulsory to follow every advice herein. Then we've got one from Rubin, which is really interesting because we haven't seen this guy. We need to plan the battle in advance, the battle being the task that lies ahead of us. I will not give up without a fight, even if everyone else has to come has come to terms with their own mortality. We need to join our forces, Bachelor, and combine our diverse skills. Our enemy is invisible, ubiquitous, dissolved into the very things that we need to purify. The enemy seems invulnerable, but it is not imperceptible, and whatever terror it instills in us is explained simply by our lack of knowledge. If we are to destroy the enemy, we need to study it first. For this, we need to capture it. This is our first and foremost priority. Please forgive my reiteration of self-evident things like these. My only reason for spelling it all out is to better understand it myself. Our goals are not quite the same. I strive to save as many lives as possible, whereas your purpose is to put an end to the outbreak. I've been told of your abiding desire to uncover the truth. I would gladly help you with that. If you will help me achieve my goal, together we can eradicate the disease and save everything that might still be saved. Stock Rubin. 
P.S. You'll find me at my secret prosectorium in the warehouses district. The map is on the reverse of this letter. And then the worrying message from Kane, we've already read from him. So now we've got Kane, or not Kane, uh, Ruben. And hopefully he'll appear on the map somewhere. No, we know Vlad the Younger. Uh, we've seen the butchers. He said in the warehouse district. Secret prosectorium in the warehouse district. The map is on the reverse of this letter. Except I don't really see boiler room, factory buildings, factory buildings, bad griefs lair, Ruben's prosectorium. Okay, so it's right here. At least I was able to sort of figure it out. Where the hell am I? Because I don't remember where I stopped. Ah, right there. That's right. Okay, so we just need to head up there across the courtyard and down that way. Okay. I have a plan. Or at least a course of action. Boy, those were some very lengthy letters, but we made it through them. Okay, so the Sand Plague thing. Let's see. It's 1723. This is 523, approximately 530 in the evening. So we've got about six and a half hours to try and figure out all of this. How are we looking? Exhaustion's fine. Health is at three quarters. Immunity's doing okay. Infection's gone. Hunger. Okay. So we're doing all right, actually. We're in a we're in pretty good shape right now. First couple of days were pretty rough on us, but we've got some decent stuff in our inventory for trading with the children, for items that we might need. Um, we're still compulsively checking garbage cans for anything else that we might find. Like those, for example. Um, I've got a decent amount of food as well, I think, under rations here. Yeah, see, I managed to get a bunch of dried food bread, dried fish, dried meat, things like that. Um, because it had come down in price somewhat, and I did get paid a whole bunch for going after the butchers, which uh, one of you also was nice enough to comment and point out that this is the second time that the Olgimskis, specifically Vlad the Younger, has used me to eliminate the butchers. And it kind of sounds like he's intentionally actually using me, not in a manner of like, oh, this is opportunistic, we both want the same thing. No, he's actually like manipulating me to go and eliminate rogue butchers that he doesn't like, which is entirely possible. So that's a little suspect, but we're gonna save before we go in here. I'm gonna keep saving on this file for now. Ruben. Nice toys. Oh. Not that I can see anything in there at the moment. I'm on my last legs. I can't take it anymore. Perfect valor is to do without witness what one would do before all the world. Stanislav Rubin. So Alexander Sabarov, a strong person in every sense of the word. He can break your neck or set your dislocated joint easy, equally easily. A very gifted autodidact... His main concern is the others, never the man himself. A selfless man, a man of principle, someone you can always rely on. Vlad Olgimsky, he was old Burak's best student, willful, headstrong, sturdy. He will always do what he believes to be the right thing and be stubborn as a mule about it. It's almost impossible to find a common tongue with him. He doesn't respect any authority except for that of his precious master. I'm noticing that pretty much everybody always has one person that really likes them and one person that really doesn't. Dear colleague, by some happy coincidence, I managed to get my hands on a certain vessel that I believe I can recover the pathogen from, which means we are now all set to research the vaccine. But as it, odd as it may sound, I'd rather avoid tapping into that source I mentioned, unless I absolutely have to. I'd rather examine the samples that can be procured from the dead tissue. Wait a moment, how can we possibly produce a vaccine with what scarce equipment we have? It won't be a vaccine per se, but rather a solution that might temporarily bolster the immune system. True, I don't have much in the way of equipment, but I have plenty of reagents, herbal tinctures, twirene infusions by and large. The least we can expect is to keep ourselves reasonably safe until a better equipped team arrives. Where are we going to get the dead tissue from? I was going to ask you to bring a sample or two from one of the infected quarters. Be doubly careful though, and make sure to get the dissection fully cleared with one of the rulers, else the risk would be twice as high as needs be. 
I'd go myself, but there are reasons that make it impossible for me to leave Simon's body unattended. Um, it's not so difficult as it is, but to take samples I need syringes, sterile containers, ice packs, I see none of those here. As they searched for Isidore's killer, these savages wrought havoc on what laboratory equipment we had, and after the rumors of your discovery reached the town full, most medicants and reagents were stolen. Regrettably, I was unable to control it. You do understand that this makes further work impossible, don't you? To investigate, apprehend the looters, cover the medicine, small town... Um, we're gonna say this one. Do pay a visit to Governor Sabarov. I wouldn't go with Vlad... I wouldn't go to Vlad if I were you. He's too resourceful and too inclined to drag you into his schemes. The canes are also out of the question, as anything that leads Yorgi to me will likely result in Simon's body being removed, and I still have a lot of work to do. Ah, crap. Find someone else to obtain the samples. Our job is to study the specimen under the microscope, not to cut it out in some seedy alley. Or, sounds reasonable, I'll see you soon. I'm gonna go with this one. We have a save file, so we need to go and talk to Sabarov. Love how the music suddenly kicked up too, by the way. Alright, see you later. If I am to eradicate the enemy, I must study its habits and capture it. This will be no mean feat. As is customary, we need to perform an autopsy on someone who has already succumbed to the sand plague in order to procure a specimen of infected tissue. First and foremost, I need to secure Sabarov's consent, let any of, lest any of the usual complications linked to working with dead bodies arise. Okay. So, we're gonna leave the warehouse district, and I'm gonna head up a bridge or so, and then we'll take a right, or a left across the bridge. Please don't be fenced off. Thank you. Is there more than one way out? Wait, what? Ow, oh, fine. I apparently just went completely backwards, but that's okay. So now... No. I need to go this way. Follow the train tracks. We've done this before. It's just a creepier way to go, is all. Okay. All the way across the tracks and north to Alexander Sabarov. Ugh. This is the first time I've really felt the time crunch, because I didn't realize... I mean, I got the letter... I would assume I got the letter fairly late. I don't know for sure, though, because I slept for four hours. So, potentially, I could have received that letter at, like, noon instead of at 5.30. So I'm hoping I didn't screw myself over and not give myself enough time for this, but at this point... This is, this is where the game's starting to feel really intense. I feel like I'm a little rushed for time, because it's already 6 o'clock now. Right? Yeah, 6 o'clock. Um, and now, I mean, this is the second time that butchers have emerged. Bodies are getting stolen. The plague is in full release at this point. It hasn't quite gone full tilt yet, but we do have infected portions of the city that we need to watch out for. It's getting intense. Where am I? I'm over here. Okay, I needed to hang a left then and start heading north to Sabarov. Okay. They did say that it's not dangerous in its early stages. It's not contagious immediately after contraction. And I do remember, thanks to all of you, that I do have this handy-dandy little visor. Uh, I need to see if I can't find more lenses. If I see those, I'm going to be trading for them immediately because they improve the visor and make it, well, better. Oh, wait a minute. Well, let's check in here real quick. I don't know if I've got the money for it anyway, but I want to see. Yeah, now see, all he's got is kerosene and sewing needles. Um, watch. Nothing special about it. All the case and lids seem made of low-grade silver. I'm gonna sell these, because I really haven't seen any of the children that want to trade for them. The knife I'm keeping. Beautiful necklace. Rather mammoth or elephant tusk with heavy prominent. I may as well sell that. 
Um, I think the ring I can keep. You know, hold on. I'm just gonna hold on to these for now. I don't. I'm hesitant to sell anything unless I absolutely need the money. Because I just don't want to give something up that I, you know, like I could have been selling razors. I think I actually have sold some razors, and then realized that I could trade them to the children. Which, by the way, feels really seedy, I might mention. Where did I go? I get so easily turned around here. Okay, there I am. So if I had left through there... Okay. I'm on the right way now, right? Yes. And that's the... Is this the same? No, this is a different one. Where is this? Doesn't matter, it's locked. Looks like the same type of little underground club as the... I can't remember what his name is. Okay, that's where we need to start being careful. Uh, but under my adherence... I think it was Andre Stamatin. Yeah, Andre Stamatin. He's the guy who was like, running the other little club or whatever it was. Uh, sorry, hang another left down here. We're gonna go all the way around. And then go that way, and I should be where I want to be. Okay. I see another dumpster. There are a couple dumpsters, actually. Yay, sewing needles and water bottles. Or empty bottles. I keep calling them water bottles, because I don't really know if you can fill anything up other than water with those. Fill them up with anything other than water is more what I meant to say. Okay, and then... I'm basically right here, yeah? Yeah. So just head this way. And hang a right. Nope. That didn't work. Will this work? No. Stupid fences. I suppose I could go all the way around to the end of the road there, take the river path up, but I kind of just want to get there. God, why is Sabarov in this stupid place? Ugh. The lighting changed. It's creepy. Okay, I'm turning this on. I'm supposed to keep an eye out for clouds. Clouds of plague. I don't really know what they look like, but it certainly makes me nervous even being here. Okay. Is there really no way to cure the disease? We are doing worse than ever. The infection is spreading. Um. I need to work with dead bodies. I was told that this work demands your sanction. Is that true? I regret to say that no one can help you there. Local superstition prohibits any violation of a body's integrity. At a cult of the dead on top. If they see you dissecting a corpse, they might tear you to pieces. It's already happened once. How was such a bizarre tradition born? I am not the best expert on the kin. Ask the residents of the Earth District. I'm sure they can tell you more. Although they are not particularly talkative. Ask Big Vlad. He has promised to assist you in every way, the cunning hypocrite. Very well, but I don't need dead tissue for my own entertainment. I need them in order to fight the disease. I understand, but there's nothing I can do. Let us pretend this conversation never happened. You might want to turn to your new acquaintances. As far as I can judge, they are ready to do anything you ask. I'd rather turn to someone educated. This difficulty could be resolved by some rather sinister people. I'm talking about butchers. Butchers, rather obviously, have no qualms about cutting bodies. Tradition gives them a hereditary right to perform this act. I've had the pleasure of meeting one of them, and he was a fugitive criminal. Of course, Ogimsky had them locked up after another of their strikes. However, it is said that on the eve of the blockade, a group of butchers did not make it back to the cemetery on time. Someone is hiding them. There is a house here in Earth whose dwellers know who it is. Take a chance. Thank you, excellent advice. The problem is, I know that house. And I have already killed somebody in that house instead of helping the guy get out, which means the guy who's hiding them is probably not going to take too kindly to me. But there's only one way to find out. 
Ah, okay, so that, I'm sure, is one of those plague clouds that I need to be avoiding. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got a long way south to head. Let me see if I can take an alternate route, maybe hit up some dumpsters along the way. Oh, God, every time I describe this game to one of my friends as well, uh, it just makes you sound like a really weird person. Because some of the best tips you can really, or some of the best resources you can get are by dumpster diving, so that you can find sharp objects like razors and needles, which you can then trade to children for drugs and ammunition. Does not really make you sound like a good sort of guy. <laughs> Ugh, and I suppose depending on how you play the game, you might not really be a good sort of guy. All right, I was hoping I could head for more dumpsters, but I need to just start heading this direction now. Bong. Um, did I just walk myself into a circle I can't get out of? Yes, I did. Dang it. Okay, let's go this way, then head right. And I should at least be back out on the street. There we are. Nothing in that one. And now if I head this direction, yeah. I'm right where I want to be. I suppose in my defense, I talked to the butcher to just try and be like, hey dude, I have some questions for you, and then he just attacked me. So at least it was self-defense. Okay, save that one. So it's not like I walked in and murdered him out of cold blood. I just hope that this kid will see it that way. I'm gonna check this dumpster real fast before I head inside and talk to him. Pocket watch and a bottle. Still don't know what the pocket watches are for. Okay, now, last time I found him, the kid was back here. Still there. Lies always turn out to be true. Don't mess with Earth. Um. Concealing runaway butchers in this house will crucify me. What's this about? Running more errands for the old Gimskis? No, this time I've come of my own accord. I need your help. Well, I gotta hear that. Why on earth would the wise serpent seek anyone's help? I need the tissue of a sand plague victim. You can only find dead victims in the infected houses. Since you appear to be alive, you've never entered a single one of them. You will have five to ten minutes if you do, then the infection strikes, with the expected results. Perhaps you could find a single runaway that would agree to help. What would he want in return? Perhaps I could find a lot of runaways that would agree to help if only I asked them to. And the same me... And the same men will ask you for a favor then. Will you do me one? Depends on what you're planning to ask. You're influential with Olgimsky. Use that influence. Tell him to stop persecuting the runaways. It's no longer a revenge situation, but he's still all too eager. Takes the guy quite some time to calm down, huh? Anyway, if he swears to leave alone the butchers that are now outside the termitary, I'll take three runaways into talk three runaways into risking their lives. It's not like they have anything to lose anyway. I'll try. So now I gotta go talk to Big Vlad. All right. God, I hope he'll help me with this, but all of these freaking rulers of the, or leaders of the town, every one of them is just so pig-headed and stubborn. You know, I keep going to these guys and I'm like, hey, I need your help. Do this or there's an excellent chance everyone is gonna die. And they're like, nope, tradition, can't do it. Um. Well, can one of you, you know, the three of you need to work together. Nope, we all hate each other. That's just the way it is. We all need each other, but we all hate each other, so we're not going to help out. Not until you, you know, jump through 1,200 hoops in order to prove to one of us that there is absolutely no other option. Ugh. Man, wouldn't the town leaders have the town's best interests at heart? I mean, you'd think so... But they don't. Give me. Water bottles are good. What time is it? Almost 6.30? 7.30. Boy. 
Walking these streets is consuming a lot of time. Hi there. Want to trade? You do have a bandage. And I have 39 bottles of water, so I will happily trade you for a bandage. What have you got? Uh, you've got ammunition. I could trade you with needles, and I could trade you with... Nuts. What are the nuts worth? One and two. I'll trade you the needle for the revolver ammo. I probably need at least six. Um, why not? You've got Meridorm. I already have Meridorm, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. Okay, Big Vlad. Big Vlad, Big Vlad, Big Vlad. I don't like talking with you because you're usually very unhelpful. I don't think this guy has actually helped me even once. Every time I talk to him, it just turns into something where he's being obstinate or difficult or wants me to go talk to his kid or wants me to ignore talking to his kid. Okay. This gun is dangerous. Skinners, yes. Very that was dangerous. one nasty day. Wouldn't you agree? No one can resist her. I'd like to offer you a bargain. It has to do with your fugitives. Oh, come now. To my mind, there's nothing to discuss here. However, a good bargain always catches my attention. So? Oh, that's tricky. Oh, that's so difficult. Because if I do this, he'll probably do it. And there's an excellent chance that they'll die due to the Sand Plague. Or I can be more honest about it and do this. But I don't really want to get involved with this. I'm going to try this one. Hmm. Aren't you a humanitarian, my dear doctor? The thing is, I don't need them to die. I need them to return to the bosom of the Bull Project. Punished, but unscathed. Um... You must have already noticed that anyone's chances to escape the epidemic unscathed are rather than low. I can increase theirs. What's in it for you? I have my own job to do, and I need these people. As for now, sadly, I cannot disclose to you as to why. And what would you be willing to offer? Ugh. I'm gonna get involved in this anyway. I'm ready to hear your offer. Let me see. I know what I'm going to ask. As a payment for my butchers. It's the unique resource you own. The one I'll never get my hands on. What is it? Your influence with the Canes. I'll cease to pursue the butchers if Yorgi ceases to pursue young Barak. He isn't guilty. He has an airtight alibi against all charges, which I am willing to confirm. Let them leave him alone. Agreed? <sighs> if you're vouching for him, I'll inform the Canes as soon as I have a chance. Indeed, indeed. And I'd rather you convince Reuben that young Barak had nothing to do with Isidore's tragic death. The thick-headed Reuben is the last one who still needs convincing anyway. The boy might be labeled as patric as might be labeled a patricide, as if he hasn't had enough. Do you see Reuben from time You do see Reuben from time to time, I know that. I'll pass your words to Reuben. I haven't finished yet. Apart from that, I wish they stopped torturing me about the termitary. I'm tired of repeating that it's clean. That is why it was closed in the first place. You know what? You just suggested an excellent idea to me. How about this? You stop the persecution, and I'll kindly spare the Canes my opinions on what's inside the termitary. This won't happen before I closely examine the termitary myself, so unfortunately we are unlikely to find a compromise. Uh, I'm gonna go with the top one. For goodness sake, if you put it like this... Yes, certainly. Certainly, I was going to... Uh, it's no matter now. Now that the Skinner's is infected, just like the crude sprawl before it, you have my word as a merchant. The thing is, I know you as a man of honor. Damn it. I'm glad we have an agreement. The word of a merchant provides a reliable assurance. Okay, so if I look at this now... Uh, I must study its habitat's capture. Okay, if I can reach an agreement with the concealers, then the runaway butchers might help provide dead bodies for my autopsies. I've heard rumor of a house here somewhere on Earth where the criminal workers of the abattoir go into hiding. They have no great regard for human life, it seems. Three lives were given in exchange for Olgimsky's promise to cease the persecution of the runaway tradesmen. Olgimsky has become strangely pliable. Apparently, he is mostly troubled by the termitary. It has become a kind of Achilles' heel to him. It is interesting to note that he asked me to solicit for young Barak as he stands accused before the Canes. Could it be that something is wrong here? 
Okay, well guys, I am all out of time for this episode, so when we pick it up, I'm gonna get to the Kane's house. We'll talk to Kane about Barack, and then hopefully we'll have the ability to go get the butchers. Although we might have to talk to... Mm, I've already forgotten his name, the other young doctor who I'm doing autopsies with. I'll look it up in a minute. So, I will see everybody in the next episode of the Canes. I hope you've enjoyed the series. And if you do, please let me know by leaving a like and a comment in the section below. And as always, guys, I will see everyone in the next video. Catch you guys later.